grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all standing. We now sing our processional hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise, verses 1 and 4, hymn number 423. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Thank you, 
sorry. Technical difficulties. Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. We give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 15, that we'll read by half verse. Lord, who may dwell in thy tabernacle? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does not what is right. Who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does, he does no evil to his friend. He does not be contempt by his neighbor. In his sight the wicked is rejected. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong. And he does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall, shall never be overthrown. A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave his birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved, that everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word, and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious, and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Standing, we now sing our sequence hymn, Take My Heart and Let It Be, hymn number 707. 707. <laughs>
According to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. To the glory of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. You know, the Bible is, is full of examples of beautiful poetry, but there are not so many examples of romantic poetry. But the Song of Solomon has a wonderful example, or lots of wonderful examples, of romantic poems. Um, and so, that's one good reason to, uh, to read it today as our Old Testament lesson. And so to remind you again of what we've heard, the poem, or in the words, the verse, the voice of my beloved, look, he comes. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in the windows, looking through the lattice. And no, he's not a peeping Tom, but uh, sounds like it. But actually, he is one with whom this young lady wants to elope. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Another part of this lovely poem was a favorite of my mother's, and that's one reason we had to hear it this morning. Um, words that uh, she had framed and that we had on our bathroom wall, illustrations also adorning it, uh, turtle doves and blossoming vines and fig trees, and in the middle of it, the calligraphy of these verses Listen, I love this. For now, the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. 
Besides being beautiful calligraphy in our bathroom, these words could make a nice um, valentine or a nice love letter, especially the first ones I read. And then there is our gospel reading. Um, not so nice as, um, uh, as calligraphy or a valentine. The words of Jesus when he said, it's from the human heart that comes all evil. Theft, murder, excuse me, theft, murder, envy, slander, pride. That's not the whole list. But enough for now. You get the idea that these are the evil things that come from the human heart. And sometimes we may forget that such things such evil and ugly things that Jesus addresses here, he also suffered there on the cross at Calvary. The evil things said, words that were hurled at him as he passed by, judgments, slander. Finally making his way to where he suffered the center of all evil in his death on the cross at Calvary. St. Paul has in mind that ugly, uh, blood-stained cross as a symbol of all things evil that Jesus suffered and that we suffer. He had that ugly cross in mind when he wrote in his letter to the church at Corinth, the first chapter, the word of the cross is senseless to some, to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, the word of the cross is the power of God. So we have a pretty poem and beautiful words suitable for framing. And then we have the word of the cross. I got to admit that I do like the pretty poetry. I, I love the love stories and even the sentimental uh, musicals with their happy endings. Um, you know that song, These Are a Few of My Favorite Things? Musicals are not among my wife's favorite things. Um, I was listening to something on YouTube the other day and came across uh, Maya Bialik, uh, the girlfriend of Sheldon in Big Bang Theory, uh, and she was speaking about that which um, she has different in herself from most others, but especially most other uh, actors. She confided, I hate musicals. So I rewound it and turned it up full blast because Stephanie was in the, uh, in, in the next room and I wanted her to know that she has a kindred spirit in this uh, neuroscientist, actually, who does not care for musicals. But um, I'm like that, but the opposite, okay? As much as she doesn't like them, I love, uh, I love uh, love stories that have happy endings. Uh, I like it when tough cowboys sing about Oh, what a beautiful morning. And when a stern Navy commander tears up and, uh, and sings Edelweiss. And this is maybe uh, more than I should confess, but I even like Andy Williams' Christmas specials from the 70s. And, and I have to say I laughed uh, as much as anything else to see Lawrence Welk's Christmas special. But it seems like as things have gotten awful and images horrible, that 
after so much, I want to see the sound of music, you know? Um, so I do. And Stephanie leaves the room. Um, it's a diversion, and we get that. You know, when, when I do some counseling with people who are grieving, I let them know there's nothing wrong with having some healthy diversion. And I think we all need that. And for me, it's a, it's a musical. It could be a ball game. It could be a lot of things. But um, when I come here, I am so thankful that what we have here is not a diversion. What we have here is the reality of the resurrection and its power in the person of Jesus Christ who suffered, who suffered the worst kind of evil and who rose up from it to reign in our hearts and to be with us as we suffer the worst kind of evil. I'm thankful that this is not a diversion because I trust that you also need a powerful word from God, the word of the cross, the word that, uh, that goodness overcame evil and that uh, truth overcame falsehood and life overcame death and life is never put out ultimately and will always glow again. I need to know that because quite frankly sometimes it doesn't seem that way. And if, we, if there's anything we suffer as much as anything else, it's the, uh, the ding that all this puts in our faith. But our faith is just that, that things really can be at their very worst. And the word of the cross at Calvary is that that will never be the last word. That God has the final say. And he does in Afghanistan. In the hearts, the broken hearts of those who are grieving. In Haiti. In Louisiana where there will be wind and water and, and havoc because of this storm. In the midst of COVID-19 and its spread and in those who are running from the raging fires in California. Our gospel reading today is ugly truth about the worst kinds of evil. And the assertion that all these evil, evil things come from the human heart. And just as all evil comes from the human heart, so that is where Christ chooses to reign in the midst of our evil, casting it out and bringing in the fresh spirit of love. He redeems our, our hearts, but he has to get into the midst of the mess. And believe me, it's a mess. But he gets in the midst of it. And there he proves his authority to raise people up out of whatever great bereavement and sorrow and horror and terror we may feel. According to St. Paul in 1 Corinthians again, the word of the cross, foolishness to some, senseless to some, to us who are being saved, 
The word of the cross is the power of God. In other words, when your perspective is that of somebody being saved, then Jesus' words become very powerful and pertinent. Like for the woman who was caught in the act of adultery and about to be stoned to death by the rocks that were in the fists of her accusers. Let me tell you, Jesus' words at that moment were the power of God when he said, He who is without sin cast the first stone and after each one withdrew when he turned to her and said, Neither do I accuse you. Go now and be set free from your life of sin. And then there is the personal perspective of Lazarus, deep in the dark tomb, when Jesus said, Come out, Lazarus, from your tomb, from your grave. And then there is the perspective of a, of a young man, an untimely death, and his mother was widowed already. And Jesus walked up as the funeral procession was going out. And he turned to the young man in the casket and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And then there's the personal perspective of a homeless man and a mentally ill man who was tied up by the villagers, tied up among the tombs where he screamed out and threw rocks and, and uh, was wild and crazy. And Jesus healed him and returned his right mind to him. And listen to what he said to someone who was homeless. He said, you can go home now. And to someone who was friendless, he said, you can go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion for you. And then there's the perspective of the crowd that had called for Jesus to be crucified, the crowd that said, crucify him, and how as the blood drained from his veins, as he suffered upon the cross, and certainly so many of them felt the shame and the guilt. Jesus knew the saving word they would need to hear. And he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. When I counsel with people who are grieving and they feel guilty because of not being the husband or the wife that they had had, that they should have been. And they think about things they wish they would have, would have said and things done. And some might say to them, well, look at all the good things. You did your best and it was good. You know, that's not the gospel. And I would say to them, as I say to you, that if you did your very best, guess what? You still sinned. You still fell short. You still didn't do what you would do if you weren't a sinner. And I said, the gospel is not that you, you're okay. It wasn't that bad. The gospel is one thing. You are forgiven. And Jesus knew that from the cross, this is what we needed to hear. And he said it. For them who suffered shame and guilt and for the world. And then in his very last word, on his very last breath, he said something we've heard in sermons before, I'm sure. He said, it is finished, in Greek, to telestai, and it is finished was stamped on debts when they were finished being paid. No more debt. 
it's finished, were his last words, as I'm sure you've heard. And then there was the perspective of those followers after his resurrection who followed him and among them Matthew and Matthew's words recording what Jesus said to him and to them who followed. He said, Lo, I am with you and I'll, I'll, I'll be with you till the very end of the age. Or in the words of St. John, you know, the world will not see me, but you'll see me. Because I live, you're going to live. And just as I am in the Father, I am in you. And you are in me. The point of this is that people in desperate circumstances are not a, uh, are not a small percentage. It's not even a large percentage. It's every one of us. These circumstances are our circumstances. We've all suffered evils because of other humans and, we've, and their hearts that harbor evil. And we've, we've not treated ourselves that well because of our, the evil in our own hearts. And so we need something more than a diversion more than pretty poetry. We need the word of the cross that says that no matter how deep, no matter how dark, no matter how dead we might be, even the death of our hope and despair, that the power of the cross is there also to raise us up. <clears throat> I'm so thankful that what we have here is not a diversion, but is the truth of the gospel that on an ugly cross and in a painful death and in evil that brought it about, the person who holds the power of God was raised up and he is in us. And we will be raised up in the midst of our sorrows and suffering and terror. We are raised up. Not only in what we hear, but also in the visible word we see. When he says, my bloodshed is for the forgiveness of sins. It's for a, a, new, a new covenant relationship with me. And I will never forsake you, even unto the end. Amen. Standing, we now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer or on page 2 in your bulletin. We believe in one God.
Peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and those who are our For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are faithful and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop. Ruth, our bishop-elect, Chris and Jeff, our priests, Karen, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Sandra, Seth, Reverend Moore, Lane, Dan, Nanita, Jonathan, Sarah, Jake, Faith, Carol, Ralph, Ray Louise, Brooke, Judy, Jim, Shirley, Gladys, and Inez. Here is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Ida Smith, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray for us in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we can ask that we can ask you in the law, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We cannot love you with our whole heart. We cannot love our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we cannot be repentant. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may be like your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you.
make a couple of executive decisions this week, which made my job as the rector of St. George's not fun at all. One of the uh, things that we had to decide, and the vestry was split on this, and I went ahead and made the decision based on um, common sense and science, and because of that, and because of the way that a truckload of thousands of pumpkins would have to be uh, offloaded from a truck, face to face with great exertion for an extended period of time, we're not going to be doing pumpkin patch this year either because of the Delta variant and all of the numbers that we are seeing. It is very, very, very um, uh, contagious and it's harmful to lots of people and this time around, including children, they are not invulnerable to this and so we're doing it that way. And also, I'm so pleased to see how many of you took up my recommendation that we wear masks, but it was not a mandate. This is up to you. And if you have find it difficult to breathe with a mask on, this is not a mandate. Please still come to church. It's okay. But we feel like the more people that wear masks, the more that we can be defended against whatever these breakthrough cases are and all of that good stuff. So. Um, it's, you know, I, I am so disappointed that we have to deal with this new strain of the COVID virus. It's just not any fun at all. And I really would rather that we just be able to throw off all restraint and just be the church again. Uh, but it looks like we have to wait a little bit. The best experts that we can hear from right now are telling us that this will be a surge for another couple of months at most, and then it will begin to level off which see to me, I've always heard that when it gets cold, that's when the virus gets stronger, but um, there's a reason why they believe that with more vaccinations happening now, things like that, among, that's one of the, uh, among many reasons that we're actually going to uh, see a lessening of this strain. So it's gonna be with us for a little while, but we can hang in there. I'm proud of you, I know that you can do it. You might, you might wanna complain. If you wanna complain, come to my office and complain, because I'm a professional complainer and I can out complain anybody. <laughs> so we can commiserate and complain together. Anyway, so now, do we have any former Roman Catholics in the room? I'm gonna out you, okay, very good. This term will be familiar to you. It's not as familiar to Protestant Catholics I mean, Episcopalians like we are. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to be doing some special intention, leaving it on the altar in printed form. And these are the intentions of what the Roman Catholics call uh, intentions for mass, for the mass. Uh, the prayers that Dane read today are some of our intentions for the mass, is how the Roman Catholics would refer to it. Uh, those are when we pray for people uh, in needs and all of those things. But this is a special intention, 
and it is it has all of the names of all of the soldiers that were killed in afghanistan recently and then also we're going to be having a special intention for those who are about two hours away from the worst of hurricane ida and so i want to just name these people for you very quickly then and i'm naming them before the body of christ and therefore before god himself marine corps staff sergeant darren hoover marine corps sergeant john johanny rosario bichardo marine corps sergeant nicole gee marine corps corporal hunter lopez marine corps corporal dagan page marine corps corporal umberto sanchez marine corps lance corporal david espinoza marine corps lance corporal jared m schmitz marine corps lance corporal riley mccollum marine corps lance corporal dylan marola marine corps lance corporal kareem m nakui navy hospitalman maxton soviak army staff sergeant ryan c naus the oldest of these was 31. we want to pray for their families we want to pray for those civilians who died in the blasts we want to pray for god to hold back the forces of terrorism in the world and we also want to pray for those in Louisiana who are just now bearing the fierce bright brunt of Hurricane Ida, that God would shelter them in the wings of his mercy, and as his disciples cried out to him in the storm on the sea, we pray that God would hold that storm back and still the waters. We ask God to give courage and protection to those who respond to the needs of the sick and infirm, the injured, and those who find themselves without shelter and provision walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
next to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> supper he took the cup of wine when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say our Father. Lord of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover. Passover is sacrificed for us. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your heart. 
hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And let us stand now for our final hymn. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Three hundred and forty-four. <coughs> Thank you. 